Good evening, everyone. My name is Tina Hewerman, and I am one of the Detox Divas. And let me get my screen set up here. There we go. I'm one of the Detox Divas. Each week, the Detox Divas hold a class, call, information session, symposium, whatever you want to call it, on uh, different products that we carry, how they relate to your health, and, and just overall wellness for how to live a healthier, more vibrant life. But let's start out with introducing the company. Heart and Body Naturals was launched with one simple purpose, sharing the synergistic healing trilogy, mind, body, soul products formulated with the healing power of plants provided by our creator. The life-changing healing trilogy products are the one and only reason that Heart and Body Naturals is in existence. And if you've not heard um, Ben's story, Ben is one of our founders. Paula is the founder, also his wife and CEO. Um, ben was gravely ill with um, horrible um, vasculitis around the stomach that caused excruciating pain constantly in out of the ER and he was going they were suggesting he go through um, uh, uh, some sort of procedure that could have been life threatening and Paula reached out to our formulator Miss Alexandria Brighton. And Alexandria came out of retirement to go back into the to the lab and create uh, potions, mind, body, and soul that ended up saving Ben's life. So if you've not heard Ben's story, please look for that. If you've got an account, it's in the library section of your back office. And if you're new to HB Naturals and don't know, reach out to whoever invited you to this call and they can get you Ben's story on that. We do want to start this call with a very important disclaimer. The FDA does not like anyone to make medical claims or you know, treat, diagnose anything. And the statements that we make on our websites and these calls have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. HBN products are not intended to diagnose, prevent, treat, or cure any disease. The information on our websites, literature, calls, presentations is not intended as medical advice and is not intended to replace the relationship that you have with your primary health care provider. Any decision you make about your food or supplement choices should be made with the one on one help of a qualified health care provider. If you have a medical condition, see your physician um, of choice before starting. Um, tonight, I uh, am so excited to share. Um, we did have to re uh, pre record her interview, but you're going to be blown away. Um, she was able to slow down a little bit, not really have the nerves um, and really dive in. She had something come up tonight. So we pre-recorded the meeting and you were going to be blown away. But Donna Hildebrand has 25 years in the wellness industry, starting with studies in nutrition, advanced therapeutic massage therapist for 22 years, embodiment coach for 10, a novice biodynamic regenerated farmer, regenerative farmer since 2020, and creating a new future of, full, so, of as a soil food web consultant and a compost expert the woman is absolutely brilliant and if you have seen either of the prior calls you're going to be blown away um you're already blown away tonight is gonna just drive it all home we had tanya in week one we had donna last week and we've got donna this week so we've got three calls now that have covered gut health and um each one has built upon the other one and tonight we're going to dive more into the ingredients with a little bit of recap from last week's call with Donna. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with Donna's interview um, that we did today. So enjoy. So let me go grab Donna real quick and pull her back in on the screen with me. There we go, Donna. Thank you. Everyone was so excited to see you again this week on the Detox Diva call to talk about this microbiome stuff. Last week, I had so many people reaching out and commenting that it was such a great call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm so grateful that it was received so well. It is just, there's so much information about the microbiome and some more we deep dive into it the more realization it is for us, just how absolutely critical it is to start here with the microbiome, um, especially of course with our bodies, but that extends beyond our bodies into nature. We can't survive without nature and nature um, 
nature doesn't need us, but we definitely need nature. <laughs> so that is why we went through so much with that first video. I recommend people going back and watching that piece because we're not going to get to go through that nature side of it tonight. Um, but it's such a critical part to understanding how the microbiome works and how we can improve uh, the diversity of our microbiome, which is really the key here, improving the diversity. So anyways, it's great to be back tonight. We're going to talk more about the microbiome and just us as human beings. Uh, we're going to not talk as much about the nature side of it. Uh, and we're also going to go through uh, all the ingredients of the gut check product, which is super fascinating. So we're going to set up the gut check product first with a little bit of education. I, I want to let everyone know too, um, T Tina and I have worked to give you guys, we're going to be giving you guys, in addition to this recording, a link to my slide presentation, because there's going to be some things we're not going to have time to go over, but there's going to be nuggets of notes in there for you, for people who really love the information, or you want to, you wish you could have screenshotted that slide. We're going to give you the link to the whole slideshow. It's going to stay active and you can get it whenever you want. It'll be in the description of the YouTube video when the YouTube video is posted, the replay is posted. And even inside, and I'll go through that as, I, as I'm going through the presentation, I have embedded links throughout the presentation. So you can get that link to that study or uh, some extra links that I put on the end for further, you know, incredible education about the microbiome that will really motivate you and inspire you in ways that you can improve your own health and the health of the planet, really, if, you, if, if that drives you too. So we're excited to offer you guys that. I'm going to share my screen real quick and we can get the going. amount of time that you have put into this. Um, you're, you're just such a servant leader and like, like for me, you know, being a part of the, the team that brought Fulvic to HBN, knowing that other people are benefiting from that, both in their health and in their finances, and me never receiving a dime from those, just knowing that that help is going out there and people are learning. So thank you for being, yeah. being that servant leader that, that HBN is, is so proud to have you here. So go ahead and let's start that screen share. Yes, I have put a lot of time and energy in this, and it has been my pleasure, and I do hope that it contributes to everyone. So, okay, cool. So, trust your gut, exploring the miraculous world of the microbiome, part two. <laughs> so, just as a recap, what is the microbiome? The microbiome is, oh, my slideshow isn't working quite right yet. Hold on. Okay. Um, humans and our microbiome. So, at its most basic definition, micro means small and bio means living creatures. So the microbiome is all of living microbes on and inside the human body. It way extends beyond us. The microbiome is a vast and diverse ecosystem of microorganisms that provide nature's critical capacity for energy metabolism. And I really want you guys to keep hearing this word through tonight, communication between cells and all species of, and all species, including humans. The integrated community of bacteria, protozoa, fungi, and even parasites, yes, paras there are parasites that are good for us, um, exist around, on, and within each of us. In fact, we are mostly microbes. Okay, get this. We are mostly microbes, not human, with some estimates showing we have at least 10 times as many microbial cells as human cells within our body. And there's a link to that right there. It is estimated that we have 50 to 70 trillion human cells, which very much pale in comparison to the 1.4 quadrillion bacteria and 10 quadrillion fungi inside our bodies. Our, gen our genomic makeup is 150 times more bacterial than human. And that's just the bacteria. That's not including the fungi, protozoa, parasites that are also part of this microbiome. Our unique microbiome determines our genetics, and we all have a unique microbiome. No one, it's like a fingerprint, okay? Where have you been? What have you smelled? What have you eaten? What have you, you know, all these things determine yours. Um, our unique microbiome determines our genetics, our energy production, and even our mental health by facilitating communication. There's that word again, communication, and another really great word, connection between us and the natural world. So this is a big deal. Our disconnect, our lack of connection from nature has caused us to have unhealthy microbiomes. <clears throat> and we talked a lot about that in the last call. So go back and listen to that one so you can really understand how that, how that has happened. 
but this is the, the microbiome is the biological matrix of everything that is living on the planet. So like we all, we've seen the matrix, right? And we know like this whole idea that there's this technological matrix that's running the show. There's not a technological matrix running the show. There is, however, a biological matrix that is running the show. We can't see it with our naked eye, but it is everything. It is the communication network between everything and within everything. And it is absolutely running the show. If the microbiome wasn't here, life would not exist on the planet. And if the microbiome is not healthy in our gut, life and its vitality and fullness of form cannot exist in our bodies. So we got we to gotta work on that. We touched last week on the difference of like, this is a big part of why the microbiome is not working for us. Um, and that is the agricultural piece of it. And so we talked about how ag agricultural practices significantly affect the diversity. So diverse microbiome is what you want and the life of the soil, either by destroying or supporting the health of our food, water, and air. And this picture says it all. Again, go back to part one to really understand this more if you want to, it's super fascinating information. But what you really wanna know is with, com with chemical agriculture, you're gonna get these types of crops and you want to avoid these kinds of crops and these foods if you want to have a healthy microbiome. Genetically modified crops, okay? Here's the ones that are approved in the United States. And they have this really cute, fancy logo that looks so nature and green. And it's really not because Here's the thing, whether you believe in, is it okay to genetically modify something or not, that's really not the conversation here tonight. The conversation here tonight is that the reason that these are genetically modified is so that we can dump pounds and pounds and pounds of this herbicide on top of them and they won't kill the plant. So this herbicide is non-selective. It literally kills every plant it touches. And lot, farmers would use this as weed killer, but now they've done all this genetic modify modifying to the plant so that they don't have to go and kind of spot treat. It just saves the farmers a lot of time. And um, these are some real basic things that you need to know about glyphosate. Um, it is absolutely a poison to our whole entire planet and to our bodies. It's a mineral chelator. It ties up the nutrients, making them unavailable to us. It destroys the microbiome. It promotes gut dysbiosis. That's a weird way of saying that it basically um, creates a very unhealthy and very imbalanced world inside our microbiome world, both outside and inside of our bodies. It impairs neurotransmitter function. It increases inflammation and it is a patented antibiotic. So the majority of the antibiotics that we put in our body, because we got a lot of people who are like health nuts and all this, you know, kind of even some crunchy mamas on here that would never put an antibiotic in our bodies. Well, and, and we going don't. back to impairs neurotransmitter function, that's going back to that keyword communication. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. And, and the majority of the places that we get our antibiotics are not from the doctor. They're from our food. So that's why it's so important to stay away from food that has glyphosate on it. <clears throat> and so you can do some research on that, but I did put, I have some other documents here at the end that you can look at too, <clears throat> or I should say some notes, excuse my voice here. We touched base on, we touched on this whole idea of like, you know, what happened around the mid 1990s? I mean, from the 1950s, really all the way up to, and this is an old, this is out of date because it's only goes up to like 2009, 2010, but, but really right here, something even bigger like happened because look, it's like straight stream up, right? So what happened that caused all these immune, autoimmune and neurological di diseases to just skyrocket even more than they already were? And we saw this correlation between glyphosate and fertilizer consumption. Um, in 1995, really glyphosate took off. You know, I don't know what this lull was about, but regardless, there's this kind of upstream of glyphosate all the way up to 2010, where it's just, it's, it's saddening and disheartening how much poison we have put into our systems. And then fertilizer has always been a thing since 1950s. Uh, you know, just it kind of goes right along with what we just saw here from the 1950s, right? So you would think fertilizers? No, fertil why would fertilizers are great for our plants, right? Isn't that how we get our nutrients? No, fertilizers, synthetic fertilizers actually destroy the microbiome. So they destroy the soil. Um, the way you want to improve the soil, again, you can learn this in part one, is through finding natural ways to uh, improve the microbiome. And then the microbiome is actually what provides the nutrients to the plants. 
not the not the soil of itself, but the microbiome has to break them down from the soil and give them to the plants. So we're really deficient in microbiome in our soil, not deficient in nutrients in our soil. As we learn more about the microbiome and our human biology, it is absolutely clear that diverse non-human micro ecosystems is what makes life possible. It's what fuels our development, our immunity and nutrition, enabling the production of our energy, micronutrients and regenerative pathways. Regenerative pathways is healing. So within every organ system throughout the whole body, it's this unique niche of bacteria, fungi and yeast that nurtures our human cells. And this is by Dr. Zach Bush. And I put a little link in there for you to learn more about him and also have some videos at the end for you guys to watch everything he says about, he's an expert about the microbiome and he has this amazing way of communicating about it that really is so inspiring. <clears throat> we touched on the fact that the gut, gut microbiome is actually considered a vital organ. Okay, so let's just say, can you live without your brain? You cannot live without your brain. Everybody knows that. Can you live without your heart? You cannot. Everybody knows that. Can you live without your lungs? You cannot. It's a vital organ. Guess what? The microbiome is now classified as a vital organ in our bodies. And it's because of this multidirectional and, again, communicational connection or access with other organs along a 12-gut system axis. And it works by communicating with neural, endocrine, humoral, immunological, and met met metabolic pathways. So there's a link there at the bottom that will take you straight to this document. But if that if there's a dysbiosis, which is an imbalance in the gut microbi microbiota, then you're going to notice all of these symptoms, okay? But on the flip side of that, if you have balance, you're going to notice an increase in short-chain fatty acids, which is absolutely critical for a really healthy gut an increase in antioxidant production, a decrease in inflammatory mediators, a decrease in pathogenic colonization, an increase in improved lipid metabolism. Yeah, who doesn't want better fat metabolism, right? Um, anyways, you can go through this list and just see it's all good. It's all real good stuff. <laughs> so let's talk real quick about one particular access, the gut brain access, because this is super important. This is a very, very important symbiotic relationship with our microbiome, our gut and our brain. So if you've ever gone with, gone with your gut to make a decision or mentioned to someone that you just had a strong gut feeling about something, it is no coincidence that those signals actually did come from your gut. So hidden inside the walls of the digestive system is this brain in your gut. And it's revolutionizing medicine's understanding of the links between digestion, mood, health, and even the way you think. Approximately 15% of our gut lining is composed of enteric endocrine cells, which produce 90 to 95% of the serotonin and over 50% of the dopamine that our bodies use. And get this, guys, the brain doesn't even produce its own neurotransmitters. They know this now. That's completely different than what we've ever thought about the brain. The gut does it. And it's just a massive paradigm shift in the current ideology of what the, how the brain functions. So what's super important about this conversation, this bit of the conversation, is that gut health directly correlates to brain health. And that we know directly correlates to mental and emotional health. And this is a sort of loop, okay? So it's not a sort of a loop. It is a loop. And what I mean by that is that if you do everything that you can possibly do to help your gut with all the things that we share in this, this presentation, but you don't have your emotional health in check or balanced out, it's really, really difficult to create a healthy gut environment because that's how critical it is to the homeostasis and balance of the gut system. So, you know, when you're nervous, nervous Nelly, you feel sick at your gut. That's because your emotions are affecting your gut. And I don't mean to say this because I don't want to create more anxiety about this. The point in saying this is that as you start to improve your gut, you probably will notice some changes in your mental and emotional well-being. And take a hold of that and start really focusing on improving that when you have that little lift that you need. When you've gotten that little lift out of the depression that day, you've gotten that little lift out of the anxiety that day, take those moments to go farther with it. Find a coach, find a counselor, do some kind of emotional tapping or whatever different methods you have 
I know Tina, you taught you were you had an interview today with someone who does hypnosis. Amazing for helping the emotional and mental health. So whatever you can do for that is going to help you improve tremendously your microbiome and the health of your microbiome. And the you can't do one without the other, unfortunately. <laughs> um, we t we talked about the gut barrier, and this is very important because when the gut barrier is intact, the microbiome can thrive. When the microbiome is thriving, the gut barrier, it gets intact. Okay. Again, it's one of those symbiotic things again. Right. Um, so we talked a lot about this in the first call, but just to kind of over overview it real quick, we had this mucus layer, which has the microbiota or all the microorganisms that really help to protect the gut lining which consists of the epithelium, these cells that have these really amazing junctions in between each cell, just to see them as like these little zippers or Velcros that are holding the cells together to keep out, <clears throat> excuse me, to keep out toxins, pathogenic um, micro, microbi microbes, sorry, pathogenic microbes, fibers that shouldn't belong in there, like plastics and all sorts of different fibers, right? That we absorb through our skin and through the air that we breathe and all sorts of things. So, um, Tight junctions are all over our body, but in the gut, they really help to keep the things that we eat out of the bloodstream. And inside that stream of blood below the epithelium layer is where also our lymphatic system and our immune system really thrive. So this is super important to our health to keep these tight junctions sealed off. And when they aren't, that's called leaky gut syndrome and all these little, you know, critters that you don't want and things that you don't want toxins will come in between and go straight into your bloodstream. This is also a big reason why gluten is such a problem because when we have leaky gut, the gluten gets into our bloodstream. If the gluten wasn't getting into your bloodstream and your body was digesting it properly, it probably wouldn't be that big of a deal to us. A lot of people don't have problems with gluten at all in other countries because they have better tight junctions, mostly because they have better environmental laws that are keeping a lot of these poisons out of the, bot out of the food system that are creating the leaky gut. So hopefully that's starting to make more sense a little bit here and how it all plays in together. So because so much of our health starts in the gut, supporting the strength of our first line of defense can make an impact in a myriad of ways. The gut barrier is the first line of defense against intestinal pathogens and toxins. It's responsible for, listen to this, the gut barrier is responsible for the carefully regulated passage of water and electrolytes. So you could be drinking lots of water, but if you got leaky gut, you can guarantee that you're not getting hydrated, okay? Um, as well as the macro and micronutrients from our diet, our gut must function properly in order for our body and mind to thrive. The microbes and their communication network, because they are communication network, they are the pathway for reconnection. And it is reconnection that allows for regeneration and repair to happen in your body. Okay, hopefully I'm not going too fast. Everything good? All right, so let's talk a little bit about probiotics and prebiotics and postbiotics. Have you heard all three of these words and do you know what they mean? Prebiotics, to put it very simply, are the food that the probiotics, which are the microorganisms, eat, okay? Or they metabolize. And when they're metabolizing and eating, for lack of a better word, these probiotic, these prebiotic foods, they create a byproduct called postbiotics. Okay. We can see how we do this. We eat food, we metabolize them, and then we have an elimination. Well, what probiotics eliminate or their byproduct is actually called metabolites, right? Because they metabolize the food. So they have metabolites. And these are way better than just the poop that we poop out. <laughs> they actually do a lot of really amazing things for our body and they're required for our body to function and communicate very nicely. Metabolites are compounds that play key roles in directing and regulating many aspects of human health. These compounds are also referred to as postbiotics. And short chain fatty acids is one of these that I really wanted to like help you guys see uh, what they do because a lot of the products that we're going to be talking about tonight, the ingredients in the product have short chain fatty acids. So look at what all short chain fatty acids do here. That is crazy, especially the uh, type one diabetes and the fatty liver. I know so many people with um, type one 
that, um, you know, I've had supplements in the past that, that can help support someone, you know, with type two, but I've not seen anything for type one, really. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah, because it improves the symptoms of inflammatory bowel disease and Crohn's disease. It maintains the integrity of the intestinal epithelial ba barrier, which is that gut lining I just showed mm -hmm. you guys. It supports the production of intestinal mucus, which is super important. Um, regulates the expression of tight junctions, right? Like you can just see like short chain fatty acids are what repairs and builds and maintains the gut lining. So very important. And yeah, what what do you know? If we have an if we have a fully intact gut lining, that dramatically affects type one diabetes. Right. That's huge. Th yeah. This is the kind of fat we want. Right. <laughs> yeah. Short chain fatty acids are good fat. Yes. <laughs> Oh, okay. A lot of people have this question. Probiotics, harm or help? I know a lot of people do not want to hear what I'm about to say, but probiotics actually do more harm than good. And here is why. This comes from Dr. Zach Bush, again, expert on the microbiome. A few types of good bacteria, even if it's billions of those types, which is what you get in a probiotic supplement, are not going to improve your microbiome. Number one, first of all, guys, they don't even make it to the large intestines. And the large intestines is where the majority of your gut microbiota lives that does all the amazing things and communicates in all the ways that it communicates to the rest of our body. What is required in the microbiota of our gut is diversity, lots and lots and lots of diversity. Imagine we have a planet and we have 20 animals that exist on this planet, only 20 compared to the amount, I don't even know what the number is that we have, but it's astronomical. Um, how, how well is that planet going to thrive in comparison to a planet that has all the numbers of animals that we have now? So think of it like that, okay? You can't get diversity from a probiotic supplement. It has been established that the optimal healthy human gut should contain between 20,000 and 30,000 species. And they've even found some, you know, tribes in Africa where they really are indigenous to their, to their land. They have more like 40,000 in their gut because they're just living outside with the biome all the time. Um, anyways, variety is the key and the greater the diversity, the healthier the microbiome is. So a typical probiotic supplement, it's gonna deliver, let's say 35 billion to 50 billion CFUs of just a few species. So while some products contain maybe up to 24 species, that's still like a far cry from the diversity that we know to be optimal. And giving 35 billion copies of the same bacteria is like power hosing, you know, one thing into the environment. And it's actually going to create more imbalance that way. So I know a lot of people don't want to give it the probiotics because even their nutritionists, even their naturopathic doctors, even their functional medicine practitioners have been promoting this. And it's just not the way to create a healthy microbiome. But we are going to give you guys some good solutions tonight that are way better than probiotics. And even to, to kind of drive that home, if you will. We went over this in part one, but this was a study of 21 people who took an antibiotic for one week. They all had a fecal um, sample removed before the antibiotic, which measured their gut microbiota, like the diversity of it. And then there were three groups of these 21. Seven people did a wait and see. They didn't take any kind of probiotic or anything. Another seven people took a probiotic for one month and another seven people had their original fecal sample put back into their body after the um, antibiotic round was complete. And here's what happened. The group who received the probiotic had the poorest response in terms of their microbiome. They were the slowest group to return to a healthy gut, even at the end of the study after five months of monitoring it. So after six months of monitoring this, believe it or not, the, the wait and see group had restored a large part of their microbiome, but the probiotic group, they were very depleted. And uh, yeah, I'll give you guys the link to that study in the slide as well. So the benefits of supporting reinforced tight junctions and enhancing the natural diversity of the microbiome are vast. Number one thing we wanna stay away from, glyphosate, I just wanna go over this, I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but this little, Symbol right here, non-GMO Project Verified. Thank you for non-GMO Project Verified. They've done a lot of good of bringing awareness to GMOs, but it's not an end-all be-all. It doesn't mean you're not going to have high levels of glyphosate because if you're getting a non-organic wheat product, any of these things in, in red up here, 
oats, lentils, beans, wheat, if you're not getting organic, even though it has non-GMO project verified, guess what? It is saturated in glyphosate because another thing that the farming community does, the conventional farming agriculture does, is they will desiccate, meaning dry out the crop with glyphosate right, right as they harvest it because it just saves their crop. They get more yield. It pushes out the yield real fast. It, there's lots of things that, that it supposedly does that benefits the farmer, but it does not benefit us. And it doesn't benefit our soil. It doesn't, doesn't benefit our health and our, and our uh, environment. But you, you do want to do the shop for glyphosate free product. That's a new label I've started to see glyphosate free residue. I'll even buy a non-organic product sometimes that has the glyphosate free residue label on it. Okay. Cause Maybe I want something that has oats in it, but I can't find it with organic oats, but at least I know it doesn't have glyphosate residue. So these two labels here are really, really ideal. And this one might be ideal, but it's also kind of like a greenwashing thing. Unfortunately, that's what it's turned into. Greenwashing is so prevalent in our society. And um, I know on your next slide, because you and I have gone over this, um, you know, with the bath care products and and um you know the in, the toxins that we use to clean our home our laundry and things like that I've, I've often talked about um washing your clothes and you think about that if you're washing it and using dryer sheets with things that are not organic or can have components to them that can do harm you're in a chemical suit 24 7 because your sheets are also washed in it you're trapping your the largest organ of your body in these toxic clothes take them off go to bed if you sleep nude if you sleep pajamas either way you're wrapping your body back in these toxins again it's just it's constant exposure which is you know why yeah. we have all these health issues as we're learning through this gut journey that it, it, is, a, that it is a big with. part of the of the depletion of our microbiome or what, what we put on our skin and and stuff like that as well thank you for bringing that up um this is just a real quick kind of like products that have a lot of glyphosate in them. And unfortunately, Annie's, which is an organic product that's really promoted for kids, their products have such a high glyphosate residue. It is, I think it's owned by, I can't remember who, I think it's owned by General Mills. But anyways, um, just know that Annie's is not a trusted organic product right now. Um, so do a lot of, do your research and really like, there's some groups up here, EWG, Moms Across America, Food Dependency Now. These are groups that have really looked at this stuff and they give you long list of foods that you want to really look out for and avoid. Okay, so that there's some information there for you. Microbiome dysbiosis. We've talked about a lot of these things already. I'm just going to leave this here in the notes for you because we're running out of time and we want to go through the, the ingredients for our product tonight because it's so amazing. But just really look at these and find a few that you can get rid of, right? Maybe every week, take get rid of two more things and just keep, per, and then substitute it with two good things. These are the good things that can help your microbiome. And I put some links in here too. But know what the Dirty Dozen and Clean 15 is. Know, get a fermentation book and start playing with fermented foods. It's really not that hard. Um, and, and here's a little link for an apple cider vinegar tonic that you can do 30 minutes before your meals that really helps to increase your microbiome diversity and helps improve your gut. But let's go into, oh, and then also too, I did wanna say, listen, all these products here that we have, Gut Check, Fulvic Acid, Nova Coffee, get rid of that conventional coffee that's loaded with horrible toxins and molds and just switch your coffee, like that would be an improvement for your gut. Vitality and a, a beautiful tea of herbs that really support the gut health. Healing Trilogy, the mind, body, and soul. I mean, talk about prebiotics, like lots of food for the, for the probiotics. Amazing, amazing products. And the Nourish as well for kids. Kiddos can do that. It really helps get their, their body some pre prebiotics going. But let's look at Gut Check. Okay, Gut Check is our new product. We love Gut Check. It's amazing. It's a first of its kind product because it is not a probiotic. There's no probiotics in this product. It is has a lot of prebiotics and a whole lot of postbiotics. And we're going to talk about more about how, how all that works and what that is. But these are the ingredients, just real quick. Organic matcha tea, okay? Organic coconut water. Organic blue agave inulin. inulin. These are the powders of all of these, by the way. <clears throat> Organic monk fruit. And this is microbiome X, which is a patented ingredient that we've brought into gut check. But it is also a whole food um, extract. It comes from citrus. And then our love, love, love fulvic acid mineral powder. 
Gut Check has an incredible combination of ingredients that focuses on restoring the environment in our guts. That's what we want. We want to restore the environment so that the gut can do what it knows how to do, so that the microbiome inside the gut can restore itself because it's in there and it knows how to do it. It's got this innate intelligence inside of its own DNA and it will diversify, it will adjust, it will adapt if we give it the right environment. And that's what we wanna do. We wanna support it doing its thing that it, nature knows how to do best. So first ingredient, biggest ingredient in this product is matcha. Um, it is a green tea and it's processed different than all other teas. And because of the way it's processed is why it benefits our gut in so many ways. I'm not going to go over this, but this is just for those informational donkeys who love to geek out on this stuff. If you want to know how matcha tea is made, because I didn't really know before I did this presentation, it's pretty interesting. But one thing you can know is that we use ceremonial grade matcha in gut check. And it's just the best quality of matcha. It comes from this little bitty, bitty part of this top leaf here, which is the most tender youngest leaf, and it has the highest antioxidant level of all the other leaves. And it that means it has the highest concentra- concentration of chlorophyll, which is super important to the gut and overall detoxing the whole body. It contains, now that everything below, well, all, all matcha tea is going to have chlorophyll in it. All matcha tea is going to have antioxidants, but the ceremonial grade matcha tea has the highest levels. All matcha teas also contain L-theanine, theanine, uh, polyphenols, polyamines, and uh, pep increases activity of pepsin in our body. I'm going to talk. I have those highlights. So I'm going to talk about those. Uh, they all have caffeine. Um, they're all uh, well. Ceremonial grade is specifically designed for drinking. It's got a swallowed, sweet and mild flavor versus a bitter flavor, and it also has a smooth and creamy texture versus like grainy texture. So that's why we've used that in this product. <clears throat> so. Chlorophyll, top detoxifying plant pigment, the top one. We want to have chlorophyll in our bodies as much as possible. It lowers the risk for colon cancers. It binds to potential carcinogens and interferes with how they're absorbed within the human gastrointestinal tract. And it slows the rate at which harmful bacteria can reproduce. L-theanine, L-theanine, it's an amino acid that combats anxiety and sleep issues. Got to get your sleep in check if you want to have a healthy microbiome. Got to have a healthy microbiome in order to get your sleep working well. So we love healthy um, and and combating anxiety. But listen, it does do a lot for anxiety. I can't say it's going to do a lot for severe anxiety. But if you've got mild to moderate anxiety, you might find like this is a support for that. Um, it helps to alleviate anxiety, depression, and other mood related disorders. It improves sleep quality and it reduces the effects of stress and protects the brain and helps to regulate nitric oxide. Nitric oxide. What is nitric oxide? It's a molecule that our bodies produce to help cells communicate, regulate blood pressure by dilating arteries, reduce inflammation, support the immune system, improve sleep quality and more. And there's also going to be a video at the end of a video link at the end that you can do a four minute exercise to improve the nitric oxide in your body watch the video. It's cool. It it takes like six minutes to watch the video and you're going to learn a lot about it and why it's so important. But matcha contains high levels of polyphenols and polyamines that can improve the growth of beneficial gut bacteria leading to a healthier gut microbiome. And it also increases the activity of pepsin. This is an enzyme that's produced in your stomach lining where it helps to break down proteins and as a result, your digestive system works more efficiently and is better able to, to like extract nutrients from food. And also polyamines are required for growth in almost all cells. And the fact that our gut cell lining, the epithelial lining, regenerates every 72 hours, it really is, you know, having something there to support that is really beneficial. So cell, cell growth or proliferation is at the base of the continual renewal of the gastrointestinal epithelium or the lining of the gut. I'm not going to read through this, but polyphenols, which are in matcha tea, remember we're still in matcha tea, <laughs> um, they are amazing at helping to connect the gut brain access. Uh, but I'm just going to leave this here for you guys to read. And but here's a little, and then there's the link here in this. So you can click on that for this study. But here's what's cool about polyphenols in matcha tea is that they both work as a prebiotic and a postbiotic. So the bacteria 
eat the polyphenols and then they create this metabolite which goes through the blood brain barrier and communicates with the vagus nerve and creates these neurotransmitters that go straight to the brain. So they're really amazing at creating that gut brain connection, helping with all the mind, the mental issues that we have seen come out of a poor um, microbiome. Coconut water, super quick, cleanses and detoxifying, reducing stress, alleviating muscle tension. <clears throat> so many good things that we want, boost hydration, um, it's basically, did you guys know that it's compatible with human blood and they even use it as IVs in some emergencies? That's how incredible, um, it is. And it's of course known as nature's sports drink because of all the electrolytes. Um, it contains high levels of magnesium, which is an essential mineral that plays a very important role in digestion. Okay. And it helps to support the a healthy gut microbiome. Blue agave is, um, it acts as a prebiotic for the food. It's a very rich source of fiber for healthy bacteria living inside our gut digestive tract. And then fulvic acid mineral powder. I mean, I could literally, we, you guys know we have whole entire videos just on fulvic acid mineral powder, but I could do one just on how it, how it improves the microbiome and our gut. I cannot even do it justice on this slide, literally. There's more to it. I'm going to give you guys at the end of the presentation and also in the description of this replay, uh, Tina is going to put in a link to a document that I created, which really breaks down even more every single ingredient in gut check, including fulvic acid mineral powder. And it's going to tell you even more information than I can give you right now about how fulvic acid mineral powder improves the environment for the gut microbiome. But what you guys want to know is that um, more than anything, it helps to create an environment for the micro for the gut to restore and the microbiome to thrive. It gets water and hydration and electrolytes and minerals into the body. So it's doing a lot of the things that the microbiome would do for us. And guess why? Because it is a byproduct. It's a metabolite of probiotics or micro microbiome in the environment. So that's why it's actually, we're basically putting all the good things that the, that the microbiome does for us, we're putting them in our body, that communication network into our body when we take in fulvic acid mineral powder. We're putting the communication network back into our bodies. It's reconnecting everything. So that's gonna give our microbiome and our gut the support it needs while it's doing its repair. And it's also gonna continue to help maintain that healthy environment for it to just thrive and diversify. And then lastly, we have microbiome X again, patented ingredient that's been brought in and it's been shown in many studies and there's right here this is a link every single slide that has microbiome click on that you'll get a link to their website and you can see the studies that they've done on this product it's helped sleep it's helped athletes repair quicker it's their microbiome is diversified in a short amount of time from taking this product and we've incorporated this product into gut check and basically what it is is it is a um, extract or, um, uh, well, it's an extract of some flavonoids that come from two different types of fruit right here. There's, these are the names that really what that means is blood orange and grapefruit. And these are the two different flavonoids. So let's just start here with, um, this one, uh, narin naringin. I don't even know how to pronounce it. It doesn't matter. It's a really cool thing. <laughs> it, um, this is all the benefits of this flavonoid but notice that it protects the gut lining from free radicals. It increases the blood flow to the stomach. It keeps the lining of the stomach safe from damage, okay? It's an antioxidant that helps to eliminate free radicals. It boosts weight loss. It does all these amazing things. And then let's go to the other one, which is Hesperidin. And it also um, benefits the healing of hemorrhoids and ulcers. A lot of people have ulcers these days because that has a lot to do with the gut lining. It preserves bone health. Um, it supports cellular health. It improves glucose tolerance. It, in, it decreases lipid pero, pero, peroxidization. Oh, I'm sorry, peroxi peroxidation. It enhances cellular antioxidant defenses. I mean, just incredible. Managing menopause symptoms. Hello, thank you. <laughs> Supports um, blood vessels from damage, uh, anti-inflammatory. Cool, 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 cool flavonoid. But I do want you guys to know it's similar to black seed oil. It does, it helps so much with like supporting um, 
the uh, blood pressure and all that, that you do want to be aware that if you're on blood thinners, anticoagulants, um, things like that, uh, blood pressure, drugs, calcium channel blockers or sedatives, just have a conversation with your doctor, please, um, because this does also affect that. This could possibly be a way for you to get off those medications, but you need to talk to your physician about that before you just jump in and do both at the same time. Um, okay, so here we are at the end. Uh, some really cool videos for you guys to check out. You guys will not regret any amount of time that you spend watching any of these four videos from Zach Bush. And lastly, at the end of the slide, you're going to get the gut check breakdown of ingredients, which goes into much more detail than I was able to go in with you guys today. So, wow. wow. 40 minutes of information right there for you guys. That was, you know, and, and I, I know the comments are going to be coming through and uh, they're going to be saying, we want more, we want more, we want more. So thank you so much for um, your knowledge and, and sharing. Can we give her some love in the chat? Um, and thank you so much for your knowledge and for sharing all of that. Um, because I don't think people really understand the importance until now of that gut, that healthy gut, like everything starts right there, you know, in the center, divinely created. And, um, you know, me and my story is, you know, I, I lost my mom to cancer. And so I'm doing everything I can to educate and share products to help someone else's daughter go through that journey or prevent that journey you know, on down the road, you know, just by proper supplementation and keeping the body healthy. So thank you for your knowledge and for sharing. Absolutely. Good night, everybody. Wasn't that amazing? I am uh, just, there we go. Let's see. Uh, there we go. So that call just so amazing. She's a wealth of knowledge. So grateful for her and Tanya too, who did our week one call on this. I know we're running over on time. Um, so I'm gonna cut this short. Gut check is now available. Please reach out to whoever invited you to this call or get that ordered in your back office. I truly think that this and Fulvic are in, in Black Seed are the top three products that we carry as far as um, how they help each other. May Try Me product. If you are a first time customer and place a 100 CV order, then you will receive a free bottle of oregano. Um, you can see the benefits there. Go ahead and take a screenshot of that if you want. Um, and if you are a reoccurring um, person and a member of HBN already, then this is going to be given to you if you do an auto ship. And then don't forget that uh, we do have our um, weight loss challenge where the company will pay you up to $500 to lose weight. And as always, you guys, thank you so much for attending um, these meetings, um, these online classes. We truly appreciate you and um, your time in in coming to these classes and learning with us. So with that, I am going to end the meeting so you can get off to Marcus's call if you're interested in the business opportunity. Um, that would be a great call to hop on. And I will splice this and make it so that there weren't any loud keyboards. I do type hard um, at the end. Please reach out to whoever invited you to this call for more information or for ordering. So thank you very much and have a wonderful evening, everybody. Tina, I just wanted to thank you for putting this together. I truly, truly appreciate it. And I know that everybody does too. You've totally crushed it the last, what, three or four weeks covering for Landy while she was out. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Landy will be back next week. So we'll get to see her beautiful face again. So, but she's had a great trip if you follow her. So have a great evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Michelle. That means a lot. Um, much love. Bye-bye.